This video is going to discuss modes of discovery. Our mnemonic is PIDEA, hindi yung Drug Enforcement Agency ha. That's letter I, PIDEA. So what is letter P? P stands for, that is your Rule 27, the production or inspection of documents or things. And another P stands for the physical and mental examinations of a uh, mental examination of persons. That is your rule 28. How about letter D? Letter D is of course the famous deposition. Take note that pinag pinag-uusapan ang deposition. Merong deposition before action or before the case is filed. That is your rule 24. And there is also a deposition pending action. That is your rule 23. And take note also that there is a deposition pending appeal. That is your rule 24. How about letter I? Letter I is your rule 25 interrogatories to parties and last is your letter a rule 26 admission by adverse party so this is how we are going to discuss the modes of discovery pidea 2000 bar exam question describe briefly at least five modes of discovery under the rules of court so if you if you do not know what we have discussed in the previous slide, mahirap siyang i-recall. Isa-isahin mo pa yun. Ano nga ulit yung Rule 23, Rule 25. But if you know PIDEA, then it's easier to answer. Ginambol natin konti para mas madaling i-recall. So that is a 5% question. If you can write already the PIDEA, with, even without the brief discussion, at least guaranteed ka nang meron ka nang 3%. But for the brief description of each mode of discovery, we will be discussing that in the next slides. So we start our discussion with the first letter P, that is your Rule 27, Production or Inspection of Documents or Things. Pag binasa mo si Rule 27, there is only one section. But wag kalimutan na ang Rule 27 is not only about production or inspection of documents or things. Rule 27 also talks about allowing a party to permit entry upon designated land or other property. And if there is an order, the order now should specify the time, the place, and manner of making the inspection and taking copies and photographs as may and may prescribe such terms and conditions as are just. So legal forms muna tayo. Here is an example of your Rule 27. What do you notice? There must be a motion. There must be a motion filed a motion for production or inspection of documents or things or a motion to allow you to enter the word the law the words used by the law is to permit entry upon designated land or other property so take note ha dapat my motion at kung my motion dapat your motion should comply with the requirements of the law. We will be discussing that later. What else? Take note that your Rule 27 can be availed by any party. It means that it can be availed by the plaintiff or by the defendant. Unlike in criminal cases, sa criminal case, you also have your mo you you can also avail of production or inspection of documents or things. But take note, ha, sa criminal case, it is only the accused who can avail this mode of discovery. Sa civil case, the plaintiff or the defendant can avail of this mode of discovery. For you to avail Rule 27, you must file a motion. And your motion must comply with the requirements of the rules regarding a motion. And under the 2019 rules, ha, very clear na yan, nakasulat na mismo that there is now a non-litigious motion 
and there is a litigious motion. You take note of the spelling. That's L-I-T-I-G-I-O-U-S. Bakit ko kailangan i-emphasize yan? Because I noticed kahit sa mga nagko-comment dyan sa Facebook, sa Pulse, minsan mali-mali ang spelling. At hindi lang spelling ang mali. Kahit yung subject verb agreement, nagbabaksing ang sakit sa mata. So, dapat if you are going to take the bar examinations, you brushed up on your spelling, brush up on the subject verb agreement, sentence structure. Pag-aralan nyo lahat yan guys kasi sayang yung one year na pagre-review, yung iba two years nang nagre-review, tapos first sentence pa lang ayaw nang basahin ni examiner kasi sumakit na yung ulo very particular pala si examiner sa mga spelling sa mga sentence structure subject verb agreement so masasayang so let's go back to non litigious motion ano ba itong non litigious motion these are motions which will prejudice or which will not prejudice the rights of the adverse parties this is your non-litigious motion. And since it will not prejudice the rights of the adverse parties, the requirement of the law is it will not be set for hearing and it shall be resolved by the court within five calendar days from receipt. Again, ha, non-litigious motion shall no longer be set for hearing and shall be resolved by the court within five calendar days from receipt thereof. How about the litigious motion? Ano naman ang litigious motion? So, if this is the definition of your non-litigious motion, syempre opposite lang. So, your litigious, litigious motion will prejudice the rights of adverse parties. And since your adverse parties will be prejudiced, the law gives the adverse party the right to file his or her opposition within five calendar days from receipt. And the court will now resolve the motion within 15 calendar days from receipt of the opposition or if there is no opposition filed upon expiration of the period to file such opposition. Let's go to section 6. Ito yung importante. Kung dati, yung mga litigious motion is hinihear ngayon under the 2019 rules, discretionary na lang on the part of the court to conduct a hearing. The court may, in the exercise of its discretion and if deemed necessary for its resolution, call a hearing on the motion. Take note of that ha. Very important yan. Kaya ngayon sa practice, may makikita kang marami ng pleadings na they do not contain notice of hearing. Unlike before kasi na yung mga litigious motion, hinihear yan. Ngayon, under the 2019 rules, take note ha, discretionary na ang paghihear ng litigious motion. Discretionary on the part of the court. So what do you know so far about Rule 27? There must be a motion and that motion can be filed by any party, either the plaintiff or the defendant. Ano pa? Take note ha, that your Rule 27 requires good cause. It must show or your motion must show good cause. What is an example of a good cost? There is this bar examination question that indicates what is a good cost. 2002 bar exam question, the plaintiff here sued the defendant in the RTC to collect on a promissory note. But before answering, what did the defendant do? He filed a motion for an order directing the plaintiff to produce the original of the note. So it is the defendant here who filed the motion for inspection or production of documents or things, your Rule 27. What is his um, reason? So that he could inspect it and verify his signature and the handwritten entries of the dates and amounts. Question. 
should the judge grant the motion of the defendant for production and inspection of the original of the promissory note? What is the answer? The answer is definitely yes. Sabi nga natin, yung Rule 27, it requires a motion, but that motion can be filed by any party. In our problem, it was the defendant who filed that motion, but it must also show good cost. There must be a good cost. And good cost ba ang inindicate ni defendant? Answer is yes, because defendant has the right to inspect and verify his signature and the handwritten entries of the dates and the amounts so that he could intelligently prepare his answer. This is the reason why the court or the judge will grant this motion for production and inspection of the original of the promissory note. So this is a good cause. This is an example of a good cause. Let me just call your attention to this 2017 case, the case of CIR versus San Miguel Corporation. This is a consolidated case. The ponente is Justice Leonin. Ang, ang ano dito pinag-uusapan is whether the San Miguel Light, your favorite San Miguel Light, whether it is a new variant or whether it is a new brand or it is just a variant of the existing San Miguel beer brands because apparently meron palang mga tax implications yon iba ang tax implication if it is a new brand and iba ang tax implication naman if it is only a variant but the reason why i included this in our discussion is because one of the issues raised is whether the motion for production of documents and objects filed by the CIR can be availed of after the court has rendered judgment. Yung CIR kasi dito nag-file ng motion for production after na ng trial, nagkaroon na ng judgment, dun pa lang sila nag-file ng motion for production of documents. So, can they do that? Is, uh, if you are a party, can you do that? Are you allowed to do that? Ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? If you are going to read Section, 7, uh, section 1, Rule 27, it is very clear that it does not provide when the motion for production of documents may be used. That is the reason why your motion for production of documents, it rests on the sound discretion of the court where the case is pending. Kaya, yung motion for production of documents, ang ideal situation, ideal time when are you going to file that is at the most pre-trial. Dapat ifa-file mo na yung motion for production mo at the most is during pre-trial. But in the case of Eagle Ridge Development Corporation versus Cameron, the Supreme Court allowed the filing of a motion for production of documents beyond the pre-trial pre stage because here, the petitioner was able to show good cause and relevance of the documents sought to be produced and the reason and the other reason bakit grinant yan ng Supreme Court is because the trial court has not yet rendered its judgment. The trial court has not yet rendered its judgment. But take note ha, dapat yung motion for production of documents at the most dapat fina-file mo na yan during pre-trial. You can only file it beyond pre-trial stage if you have good cause and there is the relevance of the documents sought to be produced. Ano pa ang ginamit na justification ng Supreme Court in denying that motion filed by the BIR? Sabi ng Supreme Court, because if you go back to the purpose of the modes of discovery, Ano ba ang purpose ng modes of discovery? That is meant to serve as a device. Device together with the pre-trial 
to narrow and clarify the basic issues between the parties also as a device for ascertaining the facts relative to the issue. Kaya kung isoma total mo yan, ang purpose talaga ng modes of discovery is to obtain knowledge of the issues and facts before the trial or before civil trial so that you will be, you will prevent that said trial are carried on in the dark so that is the main purpose of the modes of discovery specifically sa rule 27 ang purpose mo talaga is to shorten costly and time consuming trials because you can simplify the procedure and obtain admissions of facts and evidence if you are just going to use your rule 27 but ang problem kasi natin dito sa Pilipinas hindi masyadong ginagamit ang modes of discovery and like in America gamit na gamit, na gamit nila dito sa Pilipinas even judges they do not know yung modes of discovery ano yung rules Pero pag nasanay na tayo, mas madali na sana yung trial, yung mga unnecessary issues, madali nang i-dispense. Take note also that your modes of discovery, it is a further extension of the concept of pre-trial. Take note ha, ito maganda tong isulat sa mga bar exams. Nakaka-catch ng attention ng examiner. If you are a lawyer and may lumapit sa you na client, sabi ni client, attorney, I receive from my opposing party a motion, a motion for production or inspection of documents or things. But ayoko attorney, gusto ko objekan mo to. So ano ang magiging remedy mo, lawyer? How will you object this motion? First is if you see that the documents, the papers, the books, accounts, letters, photographs, objects, or tangible things are privileged matters or privileged documents, then you can use this as an objection. Kaya remember ha, one of the limitations of Rule 27 is that the documents sought to be produced and inspected must not be privileged against disclosure. Recall your section 24 of rule 120. I know, alam na alam nyo na to. This is the privileged communication rule. So, if during this communication, nagkaroon ng mga documents na binigay sa parties, nagkaroon ng mga passbook, letters, then hindi pwedeng i-apply si rule 27. Let's recall again, rule 120, these are the communication between or involving the following, husband and wife, attorney and client, physician and patient, yung pare at yung nagkukumpisal, public officers and public interest. But do not limit yourself to rule 130 kasi sabi ng Supreme Court, pwede din yung editors, they may not be compelled to disclose the source of public news. Voters, they may not be compelled to disclose for whom they voted. So, kung iboboto mo si Manny Pacquiao, then hindi ka pwedeng i-compel. What else? Trade secrets, information contained in tax census returns, bank deposits, national security matters, and intelligence information, and last is criminal matters. 2009 bar exam question, there was a complaint filed by the Continental Chemical Corporation. The complaint is for a sum of money. The defendant it's, is Barstow Trading Corporation. Ano ang cause of action ng complainant? Because the defendant here failed to pay for its purchases of industrial chemicals. But in the answer of the BTC, according to them, the reason why they refused to pay is because the complainant misrepresented that the products they, they sold to the defendant is a new line or belong to a new line. According to them, it does not belong or it did not belong to a new line because they were just identical with the complainant's existing products. And to substantiate the defense of the defendant, they filed now a motion to compel the complainant to give 
a detailed list of the ingredients of the product as well as the chemical components relying on Rule 27. Siyempre, itong si complainant nag-object invoking confidentiality of the information sought by the defendant. The question now is, are you going to allow this motion or deny? Answer is, definitely you are going to deny the motion. Bakit you are going to deny the motion? Because these are trade secrets. Ang hinihingi ni BTC is to compel CCC to give a detailed list of the products, ingredients, and chemical components. At ano ulit ang sinabi natin sa Rule 27? One of the limitations of Rule 27 is if the document sought to be produced and inspected is, a, is of a privileged matter, then Rule 27 will not apply. Your trade secret is a privileged matter. So aside from documents or papers being of a privileged matter, then what else or what other grounds can be used to oppose the motion? This one. Ito. If they do not constitute or contain evidence that is material to any matter involved in the action, then you can use this also as a ground to object or to oppose Rule 27. What else? What else? This one also. If the documents or the papers is not in the custody, possession, or control of the opposing party, then this can also be used as a ground to object Rule 27. So let's go now to the scenario wherein you party hindi ka nag-comply sa Rules 27. The scenario is, nag-file ang kalaban mo ng motion under Rule 27, grinant ni judge, but ikaw, party, you refuses to obey that order under Rule 27. So what will happen? What will be the consequences? The answer can be found in Section 3 of Rule 29. Pag hindi mo nabasa si Rule 29, most probably ang sagot mo dito is contempt. Tama din naman yon, kasi hindi ka nag-comply sa order ng court then that is contempt. But halatang halata ka ni examiner na hindi nagbasa, hindi nag-aral. Kaya kung ikaw ay hindi makakalusot sa bar exams, Wag iiyak kasi nahalata ka ni examiner na hindi ka talaga nagbasa ng maigi. So, what are the consequences? First is, the court can make an order that the matters shall be taken to be established, shall be taken to be established. Letter B, the court can also make an order refusing to allow the disobedient party to support the, the claim or defenses or to oppose the designated claims or defenses. The court is also allowed by the rules to make an order prohibiting the disobedient party from introducing in evidence designated documents or things or items of testimony. What else? Ito importante. The court is allowed to make an order is striking out pleadings or other parts thereof. So kung ikaw yung nag-file ng uh, plaint kung ikaw plaintiff, ikaw yung nag-file ng complaint. Tapos nag-file si defendant ngayon ng Rule 27, hindi ka nag-comply in strike out yung pleading mo in na in strike out yung complaint, then masasayang ang filing fees. What else? The court is allowed to make an order staying further proceedings until the order is obeyed. So, hihinto lahat ang hearing. Magdadrag ang kaso lalong tatagal. What else? The court is allowed also to make an order dismissing the action or proceeding or any part thereof. And last, the court is allowed to render a judgment by default 
against the disobedient party. Importante to ha, judgment by default. Kaya ang judgment by default is not only confined to those who failed to file an answer. Diba? Ang alam natin is there is a judgment by default if there is no answer filed. But if you do not comply also with the modes of discovery, then there can also be a judgment by default. I discuss natin yan in the next videos. I discuss natin in details. But take note that right now, there is also a judgment by default in a refusal to comply with modes of discovery. What else? It can also, the court can also make an order directing the arrest of any party or agent of a party for disobeying any of such orders except in an order to submit to a physical or mental examination. Let's relate our discussion to Rule 8, Section 8. If there is a written instrument copied in or attached to a pleading, what is your uh, what is your obligation, defendant? You have to deny it, specifically deny it under oath. Otherwise, pag hindi mo yan ginawa, the genuineness and due execution of the instrument shall be deemed admitted. But of course, that is only the general rule. Merong exceptions. Exception number one is, if the adverse party does not appear to be a party to the instrument, and exception number two is if there is a re refusal to comply with an order for an inspection of the original instrument, then this rule will not apply. Balikan natin tong 2002 bar examination question. We tackled this already. The plaintiff here sued the defendant in the RTC to collect on a promissory note. And the terms of the promissory note were stated in the complaint and a photocopy of that promissory note was attached to the complaint as an annex. What is the requirement of the law if there is an actionable document? You have to deny it under oath. Specifically deny it under oath. Otherwise, you will be admitting the due execution and genuineness of that document. What is the question here? Assuming that there is an order for production and inspection was issued, but the plaintiff failed to comply with it, how should the defendant plead to the alleged execution of the note? So how are you going to plea? Answer is, you are not required defendant to deny under oath the genuineness and due execution of the PN. Bakit? Because sabi nga natin, well that is the general, well that is the rule that is only the general rule. There is an exception and one of the exceptions is if there is refusal to comply with an order for an inspection of the original instrument, then there is no need for you to deny under oath the actionable document. Take note also that for your criminal cases, you can file also a motion, a motion for production or inspection of documents or things, particularly sa Rules 116, Section 10, there is a production or inspection of material evidence which are in possession of prosecution. So let's compare now the production or inspection of documents or things in civil cases and in criminal cases. Actually, more or less parehas lang sila. You need to file a motion. There must be a motion filed and that motion must be compliant with the requirement of the rules. But saan nagkakaiba sa civil case? It can be filed by any party, meaning to say the plaintiff or the, the complainant can file and then the defendant can also avail of this mode of discovery. But for your criminal cases, take note that only the accused can file this motion. What else? The same, there must be a good cause and there must be notice to the parties and the court here, the purpose of the court is to prevent surprises, suppression, or alteration. 
And kung sa civil case, if there is now an order granting your Rule 27 or an order granting your production or inspection of documents, it can be addressed to any party. In criminal cases, it is only addressed to the prosecution. It is only addressed to the prosecution to produce and permit the inspection and copying or photographing of any written statement given by the complainant and his witnesses, as well as to inspect the designated documents, papers, books, etc., etc. So take note of the difference, ha? and sa limitations, they are the same. The documents must not be privileged, the evidence is material to a matter involved in the case, and it must be in the possession or under the control in criminal cases, of course, it must be under the control or in possession of the prosecution, police, or other law investigating agencies. Kaya pag binasa mo yung Rule 116, Section 10, malinaw na malinaw sa title pa lang that it is a production or inspection of material evidence which are in possession of prosecution. So, take note ha, dyan nagkakaiba ang, ang mode of discovery na to. Another segue, punta tayo sa writ of amparo. If you are going to file a petition for the issuance of a writ of amparo, take note that section 14 is very clear. Justices, judges, court, they are allowed to grant inspection and inspection order or a production order and they can do that upon the filing of the petition or at any time as long as it is before final judgment how about in your writ of kalikasan sa writ of kalikasan meron ding uh, inspection order or production or inspection of documents or things order as long as you are going to file your motion a verified motion, then you can also avail of this discovery measures. If you read the memory aid issued by UP, Ateneo, San Beda, palagi dyan dinidistinguished ang Rule 27 from Sabina Duces Tecum. That is your Rule 21, Section 1. Bakit? Because if you will read the Sabina Duces Tecum, Parang parehas lang sila. It also requires the parties or the person to bring with him or her any books, documents, or other things that is under his or her control. But take note that hindi sila magkaparehas. Unang-una, your Rule 27 is a mode of discovery. But from from what uh, from our discussion, we also learned that your Rule 27 is addressed only to the parties to the action. Meaning to say, pwede mo lang siyang i-address kay plaintiff or kay complainant or kay defendant. How about your subpina dosis tecum? It can be addressed to a non-party, meaning a party who is not included in the case. Pag binasa mo si Rule 21, Section 1, very clear that it is a process directed to a person and this person does not mean that he is a party to the action so what else your rule 27 can be issued only if there is a motion filed by any party how about your subpoena dosis tecum it can be issued even upon ex parte application Saan pa sila nagkakaiba? Take note that in your Rule 27, paulit-ulit na natin itong sinasabi that there must be a good cause. The motion must show good cause. Is this also true when you talk about subpina dosis tecum? Answer is no. It need not show good cause. What is our basis? If you're going to read Section 4 of your Rule 21, there are three grounds that you can avail of if you are going to quash a subpoena duces tecum. Number one is if it is unreasonable and oppressive. Number two, if the relevancy of the books, documents, or things does not appear. And number three, if the 
a subpoena where it was issued fails to advance or the person in whose behalf the subpoena is issued fails to advance the reasonable cost of the production thereof, then you can quash the subpoena duces tecum. So, that is the reason why it did not show good cause. Saan pa sila nagkakaiba? We read this already, your Rule 29, Section 3. These are the consequences if a party refuses to obey an order under Rule 27. So these are the orders that the court can issue. How about if you will disobey your Rule 21? What will happen? The disobedience constitutes contempt of court. What is our basis? You read Section 9 of Rule 21. Very clear, expressly stated if that if there is a failure by any person and there is no adequate cause to obey a subpoena served upon him or him, that shall be deemed a contempt of the court from which the subpoena is issued. Saan talaga nagkakaiba ang subpoena dosis tecum at ang Rule 27? Take note ha, sa subpoena do si Stecum, there is a subpoena issued that you are required to appear on a scheduled date. And you will be bringing those documents for the first time on that scheduled trial or scheduled date. But for your Rule 27, sabi nga natin, ang ideal is at most, you are going to file your motion sa pre-trial or before pre-trial and the only time you will be allowed to file your motion beyond pre-trial is if you have a good cost and the documents are relevant and that is subject to the discretion of the court. So down to our last slide, dapat itong requisites ng Rule 27 diniscuss natin nung umpisa pa lang but I opted to put this in the last slide para naintindihan nyo na talaga. So again, what are the requisites? First, that there must be a motion filed and the motion must show good cost. Number two, we discussed this already. The documents must not be privileged. They are not privileged. And that documents, they contain evidence that is material to a matter involved in the action and you have to make sure also that the documents are in the possession, custody or control of the other party. Ano ang hindi pa natin nasama sa discussion? This one. Dapat yung motion mo must be served to all other parties of the case so that you will give them that um, opportunity to oppose or to object your motion. And last requisite is that the motion must designate the documents, the papers, which the party wishes to be produced and inspected. So our next video is about Rule 28, the physical and mental examination of persons.